Hey, Donna Lewis here, Breathe Life Ministries, and welcome to the Ezekiel Bible Study. We are in chapter three. Now, while I am preparing here, I just want to make sure that I can see your comments. So I'm bringing this live stream up on my phone. And that way, if you have comments, if you have questions, you can go ahead and put those in. Um, and I encourage you to put your comments and your questions into uh, this live stream. And even if you're watching it on the recast, no problem. Go ahead and put your comments, put your questions, share the video, like the video, give the hearts and the thumbs ups. Um, it encourages me and it helps uh, the um, Oh, all the algorithms with Facebook so that it gets shared and more people can benefit from the word of God. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just looking for the live stream here. There we go. And I want to bring it up so that I can actually see the, the questions. There it is. I'm ready. I can see your comments. So here we go. The Ezekiel Bible study. We want to learn from the past. We want to understand the present and we want to prepare for the future. And um, as I've said, I think on every every broadcast of this Bible study, I am actually quite overwhelmed by the depth of content in this prophetic book. Um, I had hoped to be able to cover nothing less than a chapter a week, but it's more like I'm able to do a half a chapter a week. Now, chapter two was quite friendly because it was small, so it was only 10 verses long. I was able to get that done in one week. Uh, but chapter three, again, is very, very weighty, and there is so much to cover that it's probably going to take me at least two weeks to get through chapter three. So in all actuality, this Bible study is probably going to be close to a year long. Um, and I know you're probably excited for all the good stuff, you know, Ezekiel 38 and the Gog Magog prophecies, all of, and I am too. Um, but, you know, taking it slow is good. Really benefiting from the wealth of wisdom that is in this book, line by line, is stretching me and growing me in my faith. And I know that if you take it line by line, it's going to transform you. So I encourage you to not rush through this, but really allow the word to penetrate your heart and transform your mind. And that is actually what this content from chapter three that we're gonna get into today is all about. It's all about digesting the word of God. So with that, let me go ahead and share my screen with you and bring up the slides. And I'm going to go ahead and press play. Here we go. The book of Ezekiel. I am Donna Lewis, and this is Breathe Life Ministries. Okay, so the key verse for this chapter uh, that we are studying today is Ezekiel 3, and it is uh, from the first three verses here, where God says to Ezekiel, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you. Receive into your heart all my words that I speak. 
Again, to review, the name Ezekiel means strengthened by God. And that is a key theme throughout this entire book. God strengthening Ezekiel. God strengthening his people. He lived during the time of the first temple's destruction. He was in Babylon as an exile along the Kabar River when he received this vision from God. He was the son of a priest named Buzi, and he had been called from the, from the day he was born to be a priest in the temple. But because he was in exile, he would never step one foot into that temple. He was 30 years old when he received this vision and he had been in captivity no less than five years when he received this vision from God. And it was notable and wonderful that he, began his ministry as a prophet to the people of Israel in exile at the same point that he would have begun his service in the temple in Jerusalem. Digesting the word of God. Ezekiel 3 verses 1 through 3. Now, when we left Ezekiel in chapter 2, he was seeing God spread a scroll out in front of him. And on this scroll was written lamentations, mourning, and woe. And at the end of chapter 2, uh, verse 10, he spread it before me. So God spreads the scroll before him. And he sees the writing on the front and the back. God continues in chapter 3. And, he, and I'm just going to read the first three, three verses here for you. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll. And go speak to the house of Israel. First digest, taste, mull it over. Eat this scroll. Then go. How often do we want to put the cart before the horse? How often do we want to go before we've really understood the mission? Moreover, he said to me, son of man, eat what you find, eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. In other words, he hand fed Ezekiel each word from that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I gave you. God personally fills Ezekiel with each word from that message that he was to deliver to the Israelites. We can take from this that God will personally fill us on his word through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm reminded of Deuteronomy 8, 3, 
where God is giving the law to the Israelites for the first time. And he says to them, man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. It's interesting. Do you think maybe Ezekiel remembered this scripture as God fed him his word? How profound an experience that must have been. And then in 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and, and you know, it this came to my mind. I was reminded of this passage as I read this. And 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and 12, the Apostle Paul is addressing the Corinthian church about giving. But what I'm reminded of is, is what I'm going to read to you now. May he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply, multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. It's God who fills Ezekiel on his word. Everything we experience, every good and perfect gift flows from God himself. It was sweet as honey to Ezekiel. And when I ate it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Now, isn't it interesting? It was filled with lamentations, mourning, and woe. This was not um, a happy message. It was contrary to that. But even though it was lamentations, mourning, and woe, it was straight from God himself. God, who is perfect love, love without spot or blemish, love without even the single trace of any impurity. It's sweet. It is unadulterated truth. And it nourishes as it is processed, it strengthens and fills. John the Apostle writes in the book of Revelation a similar, I mean, I mean, the same experience. It's found in Revelation 10, verses 8 through 10. And again, Ezekiel, the, the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation are so closely related to one another. They're siblings. They're scriptural siblings. Revelation 10 verses 8 through 11. This is John the Apostle writing. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, give me the little book. And he said to me, take and eat it and it will make your stomach bitter but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. 
Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. And it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. What do you think about this? Why do you suppose, and put this in your comments, if you're watching, even in the um, recast of this, please answer this question in your comments, because I am deeply interested in knowing what you think about this. Why do you suppose it turned John's stomach sour, upset his stomach? It tasted sweet but it made him sick to his stomach, gave him indigestion. Next week, we're gonna get into Ezekiel's experience. Now, Ezekiel doesn't talk about having an upset stomach. Um, but he does describe a very interesting experience, and we'll be getting into that uh, next week. What we can take away from this is that it's always preparation before purpose. And it's a painstaking preparation. It it isn't just, here's the mission, now go. It's, it's a uh, step by step, line by line. First God hand feeds Ezekiel the word that he's to deliver. Ezekiel has to chew on it, taste it, experience it running through his entire being and metabolizing. But then it doesn't stop there. Let's continue. Then he said to me, Son of man, and I'm starting now in verse four, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. So God is telling him who to deliver this message to and what to say, which is the word that he had just ate. And where? You are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech. He's not going to a foreign nation. He's going to his own people. Not to many people of unfamiliar speech and hard language whose words you cannot understand. Now, I just picked up on this. Look at the contrast. John was going to many people, nations, and different tongues. Ezekiel was going straight to the heart of God. He was going to Israel, his own people. Surely had I sent you to them, to foreign nations, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you because they will not listen to me. And for all the house of Israel, are impudent and hard-hearted. Remember how he said briars, thorns, and scorpions? <laughs> Last week we learned that uh, the people of Israel had become briars, thorns, 
and scorpions. So God continues to outline who Ezekiel is to speak to, what he is to say to them, the fact that it's the people he is living with, and what to expect out of them. And it's not going to be pleasant. There's dangers associated with giving this message. So God is preparing Ezekiel for his purpose, and he is taking his time in doing it. This has really tickled my heart. This has made me really happy as I have been processing this element. To me, this is one of the most marvelous elements of this book. God custom designed Ezekiel for his purpose. He spoke to Jeremiah and said, before I, I, I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I designed you to be a prophet to the nations. He did the same thing with Ezekiel. Before he was even known, he was hand designed by God for this exact purpose. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces. We're continuing uh, in verse eight, but let me back up again to verse seven. The house of Israel will not listen to you because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. But behold, I have made your face strong against their faces and your forehead strong against their foreheads. Like adamant stone, harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, Receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear with your ears. So what he is saying, and, and I like how it was written in uh, the Holman Standard Bible. I made you as obstinate and hard hearted as they are. In other words, it's it's bull against bull. The only difference is that Ezekiel is a bull in God's hand. Ezekiel is a bull from God, for God, in God. He is a, a bull of righteousness, a bull of obedience, and he is going to butt heads with rebellion. He's not going to move. He's not going to budge. He's not going to flinch. What are your attributes? Has anyone ever said you're stubborn? <laughs> you're bullheaded. Um, certain attributes. Well, no, let me rephrase this. Personality traits are designed by God. Your personality is custom designed by God. For a specific purpose. Even those attributes that people might even complain about. Maybe you're loud and boisterous. Maybe you're soft and quiet. 
Maybe you have a sense of humor that just rocks people's world. Maybe you are deep and thoughtful. These are attributes designed by God. Now, every personality does have, uh, well, depending on how it's being used, right? So whose hand are you in? Whose hand are you in? Are you in the hand of the world right now? Or are you in the hand of God? Consider the fact, the truth that you are custom made by God. Consider the fact that your children and their attributes are custom made by God for a specific reason. Don't break your children. Build your children in their most holy faith. If you've got a spouse, don't break your spouse. Build your spouse in their most holy faith. They're custom made by God for such a time as this. And don't break yourself. Consider that your attributes are custom designed by God for this moment in history. Well, that is what I've got for you today. And I just want to stop this screen share and come back to you now. Let me know how this is going for you. Um, what are you appreciating about this study? If you have suggestions on how to make this study even more um, interactive, uh, if you've got um, elements that you would like me to highlight during this study, please put those in the comments. I promise you I read them and I respond to them. Please like this video and share this video. And I will be back with you next week. Keep your eyes on the event page for the time and date that I'll be doing this. And uh, you have an awesome weekend. I love you very much. God bless.